All right, guys, today we have some presents for the old bird. So, the plan for today, the postman hasn't showed up yet with our presents, so we're kind of in limbo, but I don't want to sit around and waste a day waiting for them. So we're gonna get started on it, so that way when they get here with the stuff that we need, we can just start throwing it on. So, we gotta pull around back to the shop and I'll show you guys what we're doing today. What we are doing today is getting this thing set up and ready to tow the gooseneck trailer. So right now, uh, when we first pick this thing up, uh, we took it for a test tow, but the problem is, one, there's no safety chain hookup. Two, this is a six pin plug in here. So we had to plug in at the back under the bumper and the plug kept coming undone. So I got an adapter for six to seven. So the cord can go in here. And then this ball, it's like the trailer when it's sitting on the ball is too low and it like digs into the bed. You can see where it's all scratched up. And like that has to articulate up and down and left and right as you go through different bumps. So I found a ball. Oh, uh, because this I, I got under the truck and it's got like a nice plate and everything under there, like super heavy duty. Uh, so I just got another ball that sticks up two inches. Um, so basically, should keep the trailer off the bed and should help level out the trailer some. Because right now, the trailer is a little bit too low, and because of that, it, it's just like too low in the front, which. You know, obviously we need to try to get it like as close to level as possible. So we already adjusted this guy all the way down, um, but it's still not quite enough. So I think that extra two inches will be what we need. But basically this part is what was rubbing on the bed. It's just like, it just sits, it just sits a little too low on the wall. So anyway, yeah, the goal is to get the truck ready and get it hooked up properly to this trailer, safety chains and all. We're gonna put D-rings in and then go for a tow. Probably do one without the car in it, see how it does, and then do one with the car in it. The truck definitely has a boost leak. Um, we've got couplers and stuff coming to try to rectify that. I think, you know, basically if your tow's okay with the boost leak, should definitely do fine uh, with the boost leak resolved. So anyway, uh, there's some other stuff we got coming today. Trailer brake controller, we obviously need that to tow. So we got a bunch of stuff coming today. Basically the goal is to get the truck set up to tow that trailer and go test tow that trailer see how it does, and if all that goes well, then we might try to clean the trailer because with the truck being white and like a nice, like good shade of white, the trailer just looks extra crusty behind it. So I definitely kind of want to clean it up some if possible. So first thing I had to do while I'm waiting for the postman to get here is get this ball unscrewed and pulled out of there and get ready to put the new one in and start kind of mapping out where I'm going to put my D-rings for my safety chains. Did I mention it's hot and humid here today in Florida? Because it is very hot very humid all right well we are having a hell of a time getting this ball out i just went and cleaned underneath uh once it kind of dries i'm gonna look under there i basically i can't tell if the nut on the bottom is part of the metal brace and like the ball screws into it or if uh it just looks like that but i don't have the right size wrench for the ball underneath because it's like inch and a half inch and three quarter and then we try to pipe wrench on the ball up top but there's nothing really to grab onto so Anyway, when in doubt, we're gonna PB it out. So, <laughs> today's video sponsor is, well, literally could not be more perfect. Today's video sponsor is freaking PB Blaster, man. Like, this is so cool to me because I've been using PB Blaster all my life. Literally since my very first major car project, which is one of my first car projects ever, I had to do the torque tube, my 944 turbo, and it was, it was an older car, and the bolts have been taken out, so they're all like rusty and stuck in there and seized, and I remember they snapped a bolt, and it took us a full day to get it out because it was in a horrible spot. My friend's dad comes over, and he's like, dude, why aren't you using PB Blaster? Like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, ah, there's no way that works. Like, these bolts are seized, they're seized. Like, no nothing's gonna help this. Anything is worth trying at this point. So we use it, lo and behold, didn't snap another freaking bolt, all the bolts came out. I just remember like being so mind blown by that because you know I saw it as like a miracle product and something that you know might help a little bit, but I didn't realize that it was actually gonna really like go from snapping the head off a bolt to getting a bolt out kind of thing. So I was super impressed. I've used it ever since. Anytime I'm in a bind and just honestly anything like suspension bolts and stuff that have been on there for a while, I'll just hit them with PV and then let them sit for five, 10 minutes and then take them out because it's not worth potentially snapping them. Like, I've never snapped them if I've thrown PB on them, snapped them if I haven't. So, pretty much use PB on everything. So anyway, we got our just standard straight up PB. I've got a bunch of these cans. I keep one in the trailer, one in the truck, one here. Um, and then we also, when we put it back in, 
have this uh, PB penetrating grease. So it's kind of like the penetrating oil, but it also has anti-seize properties. So what we'll do is we'll put this on the threads of the new hitch when we put it in, so we don't have to deal with this when we go to take it out. Like I want to be able to get it out. So we got what we need to use uh, when we put it back in and we got what we need to use to take it out. I have faith in the old PB. We haven't had luck getting it out yet. It is gonna be our saving grace, guarantee. <laughs> I like try to spray into the threads. So like try to get up in the threads and then try to get kind of to the top because it'll work its way down. Um, and then kind of the two mating surfaces too because it'll get kind of seized up there. So I use a liberal amount. I just freaking soak this thing in PB and then we let her, let her sit for a few minutes and then we'll come back and see See if we can't get her off. We're also kind of limited on tools. We're using those Nipex Cobras right now or that pipe wrench, so. The odds are stacked against us, but we'll see if the old PB can even the odds out. <laughs> even with us having the wrong tools. <laughs> well, before it uh, monsoons on us, we're gonna take LCFA to the store and go try to pick up the right size wrench. I guess I need to measure this. Um, I think a normal trailer ball wrench will work. This one just looks like really, really big, like much larger than normal. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna go to the store, <laughs> try to get the right wrench. With those Nipex Cobras, I just, I don't have anywhere near enough leverage and you've gotta kinda squeeze them together with your hand as you're doing it and it's just, I mean, it's on there. It's a big, it's a big boy. So, anyway, hopefully uh, we get back before the downpour. It's been monsooning. I mean, it's calmed down some, but I just ran to my car and I got freaking soaked. And of course, there's like giant puddles so my shoes are completely soaked uh, every day. I'm trying to do any work outside in the summer in Florida. It's just a freaking challenge, man. Anyway, we got a big wrench. I tried to get a, um, like the trailer ball one, but it wasn't big enough. It was an inch and a half. I think we need an inch and three quarters. So hopefully this does the trick. Well, it's still raining. Can't really see it. I left my camera inside, but I want to try to keep this off before I go inside. So wish me luck, fingers crossed. All right, well, it's still raining. I, uh, my hitch and stuff finally came in, which is sweet, but this thing just spreads open anytime you try to put some real pressure on it. So I went and bought this socket, inch and three quarter socket, turned out to be the wrong size. Then I went back to the store and bought this uh, pipe wrench. So this is kind of our last ditch effort. Hopefully this gets that freaking hitch off, but whoever tightened that thing on there was like the Hulk. I mean, it's ridiculously tight. So anyway, this is our new hitch. You can kind of see Imagine the other one sits flush with the bed like that. So this lifts it two inches. So that'll get our gooseneck off the bed and allow it to articulate and then also bring the front of the trailer up some. So we've got these D-rings to bolt through that thick steel plate. Um, so these will be for our safety chains. Oh, my adapter's inside. I got the 67 pin adapter. We've got a brake controller adapter harness and I went with a nice brake controller. I figure if I get rid of the truck, I can keep this controller. Um, but I've always had crappy ones and this one's really nice. It's got, like tells you when it's hooked up and stuff and it gives you all the info on it. It's like adjustable, you can set all your whatever. So, had good reviews, looks like a nice one. You got hardware to bolt these guys in. But anyway, none of this stuff matters until we get that freaking thing off. So, going back into the freaking trenches. Gonna <laughs> try to get this thing out. Uh, all right, well, it took pipe wrench in jack handle, full jack handle with the other piece on. I tried getting it on the middle because you couldn't get it underneath. You couldn't get the handle on and get it good on the nut from underneath. It would, it's too much of an angle. So did it on the ball on the top, tried to get it from here, um, but it would just slip. Got a really good bite here in the ball. You can see like the teeth mark. And me and Ben with four feet or whatever, it took everything we had in us, me pushing him pulling to get that thing to freaking crack. So, still the new one and he's still under there, so might as well toss it in and, so we can put the nut on. Alrighty, our old, there it is, our old hitch ball is out, new hitch ball is in. It looks sick in there just because like, I know that it's gonna even out the trailer. I know that now we can actually hook up the trailer and it not be grinding into the bed because just knowing that while I was test driving just made me like super anxious. I didn't really get to even get an idea of what this thing tows like. So we're getting closer to being able to tow the trailer and see what it's really like. So really excited about that. Anyway, um, this is the PB grease that works kind of like as an anti-seize as well. It's a penetrating oil and an anti-seize. I forgot to show you guys on that hitch because I was just so excited to get it in, but it comes with this nice brush. We just brushed it onto the thread. So the nice thing about this is, like I said, if we do need to pull that out to put something in the bed, shouldn't be too much of a struggle. Won't be all seized up, but then on top of that, the biggest thing for me is when you go to tighten something like that, there's nothing 
to grab onto. There's nothing to put a wrench on, anything. I don't want to mar it up with a pipe wrench. So with the penetrating grease on there, it keeps you from getting those snags and those hangups as you're tightening the nut. So we were able to just thread the nut all the way up by hand. And by the time we needed a wrench to tighten it, it was basically binding against itself so that it didn't spin. So anyway, super handy. I really like this stuff. This is my first time using it. I'm definitely very pleased with it. So but yeah, huge thanks to PB Blaster for sponsoring this video. It's really cool for a company that I've used their products forever. I trust and have full faith in their products and like know they work and I recommend them to people all the time to sponsor a video. Like it's like perfect. It's so awesome. So anyway, if you guys haven't tried it yet, definitely check it out. Definitely worth trying. If you have a bolt that's questionable, PB it before you mess with it because if you snap it off, you're going to be crying and you're going to be in a world of hurt. Don't do it. PB it first. Okay, moving on. Uh, what is next? I'm going to go ahead and lift the RX-7 up so I can back the truck in. We need to mount the shackles, which I'll show you guys in a second. Um, it's going to be like a lot of drilling and stuff. And I've been working in the rain all day today, fighting this ball. I don't want to keep working in the rain. Prefer... Prefer not to. <laughs> all right, well, we had to call it yesterday. It was sunny when I pulled the truck back in here and it's already overcast. So we need to hustle and get the stuff done that involves being in the bed as fast as possible so we don't get rained on again. So yeah, moving on to the shackles. Let me show you guys my game plan here. This step is super handy, but not so much when you have a car above your head. Watching out for a death spike. All right, so I've already measured my distances to make this work. Uh, I need to measure, get a center line and mark exactly where I'm gonna put them. But that should be about perfect for where our chains need to go and all that stuff. So I, I, I wanted to come up with a cleaner solution than this because you know, the ball poking through the bed is a nice clean setup, but there wasn't really anything I could think of that was gonna be safe. I mean, these are nice shackles. They're rated 12,000 pounds, like they should be good. So. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna mark and start drilling, start mounting. Let's get to work. <laughs> All right, so time for the fun stuff, drilling holes. So I'm trying to figure out center and then I realized like, dude, just measure it. So I measured to the ball, measured four feet, measured all the other ones, whatever. Um, so then we marked the holes, we're drilling our pilot holes. Do not skimp on pilot holes. I used to always try to just go straight to the big size bit. I don't know why I was that silly and thought that would work, but pilot holes are very important. The pilot hole takes the longest, surprisingly enough. Going back with the bigger bits takes less time because you're not cutting that center metal out. But drilling requires patience. Take your time, go slow, works better. All right, we got our holes drilled. I'm not sure the bolts I got might be too long because they have, I'll show you, they have this uh, non-threaded portion. Ah, maybe, ah, it's gonna be closed. So we'll test one out. Hopefully it'll work. If not, we're gonna have to go grab some different bolts. So. Let's find out. They're way too long. It ends up about like right around where the end of my thumb is. So I have to stack a crazy amount of washers to make it work. So I'm just gonna go grab some like inch and a half, two inch ones and uh, those should do the trick. Hopefully, man, it's thundering. It's making all sorts of Florida noises. Um, it's, kind of, it's hit or miss with the weight well I mean, it's kind of dark gray right there but it's just hard to tell <laughs> last time when i went to the store yesterday like 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 i said it was like this and then i got there and then it monsooned and i tried to wait for the monsoon and it stopped it wasn't stopping so i just uh ran through the water got a little wet all right enough wally gagging off to lowe's all right what do you know It is freaking nuts outside. It calmed down for a second, so I came out and pulled the door down because like all this stuff got soaked because it was by the door. Bad and it's coming towards us. So, I mean, with the truck where it is, I can kind of get to those without getting soaked. So I might come back out here and throw those bolts in while it's still raining, but hopefully it freaking lets up soon, man. It's just been ruthless, of course, like the, the few days in a row where I got to work on something outside because it's a truck and doesn't really fit in the shop is when it rains. I mean, it rains kind of all the time in the summer, so I can't really pretend like it's an oddity. It always does this, but still, man, pouring. All right, both of our D-rings are in. They're bolted with nice hardware, grade eight, through the same steel beam that that is bolted through, the hitch that is. Uh, yeah, so the hardware part is done. We're gonna flip this around, throw a brake controller in, and then we can hook up to the trailer, see how it all goes. Like I said, really hoping that this has power. Because <laughs> if not, we'll have to wire one in. So if we don't have to wire one in, we just use the adapter, that'd be sweet. Because the only difference between six and seven pin is reverse lights. My trailer doesn't have reverse lights, so it doesn't matter. I just need the six pins. So 
hoping, just hoping that that is actually hooked up and that when we hook our brake controller up, that hooks up to it and it, and it all works together without having to do anything. That would be ideal. So here is our brake controller. It came with this uh, sweet, handy uh, carrying pouch in case we want to hide it from would-be thieves. This is it. It feels very solid. Looks really nice. So we have this harness that plugs directly into our Ford factory harness and then plugs into the back of the brake controller. So no splicing and wiring and things like that. So hopefully our plug is down there. Hopefully it's functional. We're gonna give it a shot. Alrighty, well at first I was really bummed because it looked like uh, they had cut the plug for the trailer brake controller or the for the yeah for the trailer brake controller the factory plug don't be this guy so someone at some point in this truck's life instead of getting that little adapter harness they just uh, cut all the wires so now we've got oh and what's even better is they did the whole splice thing to the wires and then cut those wires. Don't be the guy that does that. Buy the freaking $10 adapter harness and you can just plug it into the Ford connector. The trailer brake wires ran, but I think those are ran from the seven pin that they added on and someone added on at some point during this thing's life. So I found the factory trailer brake connector plug. I hope, I mean, it plugs into it and it turns on. And you know, if we try to press a button, it tells us we don't have a trailer connection. So we're gonna go hook up to the trailer see how it is with the ball, the chains, and see if our wiring and stuff works. So really the big moment of truth. Get out! Got a working brake controller that actually seems to work correctly for once. So I can feel the brakes actually working. The brake controller on the Dodge never seemed to, I couldn't tell ever honestly if it was working or not. I tried adjusting the gain and stuff and you could, couldn't really feel the trailer brakes themselves, but I was like, I guess it's working. Um, but also, we have, still raining, but, we have, oh, I can't even see my glasses are so foggy. Everything's so foggy. Safety chains, I gotta get new ends for those because those, the springs aren't good. We need good springs. But the best part, our cord is now, oh, this rain is so annoying. The cord is, ow, it hit my head. Jeez, this is a mess, guys. The cord works, this, our adapter works. We got this um, in here and this, this end has been pretty janky but this holds it in really tight. We're probably, I'm probably gonna zip, just zip tie it in there because it's never gonna come out of that adapter. Um, and now our cord goes in here. Before on the Dodge, it went here. So it would hang down, loop by the ground. It would get caught around the hitch. It would break these uh, zip ties that we have here, which we can now loosen some of them, but it would break them and then it would just be dragging the ground. So it was always a mess, but let me show you guys what it looks like. The whole rig, ah, damn, it's so good. We gotta clean the trailer. Front's still a little low. I mean, that's max high on the gooseneck, max raised ball we could get, and that's without the front being loaded up with stuff. So really the only thing we gotta worry about with that is our jack. So our trailer jack, this one is bent and it sits too low. So we're gonna have to rectify that somehow, but just take a gander at her. I really wish it would stop raining. Look at it. It just the only problem with this setup is it makes the trailer look so crappy because the truck looks so nice. Like the white is such a nice white, and then that's just like pale white. Uh, but you can see all like having all the trailer lights and stuff. It's really nice. So I'm stoked. I really like this setup. Pulled the trailer at least through the yard, no problem. I'll have to go on a drive and, and see how it is, but I want to finish installing the brake controller. So I'm gonna do that now. Like mount it up there and stuff. But I'm hyped. I'm just hyped that it's working and that, you know, we got it all hooked up and it's, it's like usable now. So I'm really excited to actually try and use it. All right, we got our brake controller all mounted up. Looks nice, this is like the perfect spot for it. It's like it was designed for it. Nice and out of the way, wires out of the way. Everything is solid there. So we're gonna take the old rig for a quick drive. It finally stopped raining. My problem is I had to give the guy uh, who I bought the truck from the tag back. Let me borrow it so I could drive it around a little bit and I wanted to test the trailer. Um, but obviously we couldn't get a real test with the other ball. And by the time I got the ball in, he needed the tag back. So gonna go on a quick drive. Just a quick drive. It's kind of sketchy, kind of sketchy. I have insurance on it and all that. So, I mean, we're, we're legal to an extent. The Florida law on that is kind of a gray area. So. You know, we'll just go cruise down the road real quick, whip around, come back, just see how it does, see what kind of power it has with the boost leak and all that stuff. So we're not going very far today, unfortunately, because we don't have the tag, but I'm gonna at least go on a drive, because I have to. I gotta see what it's like. Brake controllers on and ripping, dude. There's like a, a box for like the locks and stuff and the ignition, and there's a problem with these where the windshield seal leaks. That box gets moisture in it. 
And uh, anyway, it um, freaks out, so I gotta, I gotta fix that. Oh, I wish I had tow mirrors though. Kind of see what's going on back there. Test. We didn't have a trailer brake controller. I was like, man, it really feels like the trailer brakes aren't doing much. Yeah, but we didn't have anything. Yeah. I'm just gonna fix the boost leak so we can do a real test. Yeah, register it. OBS is a real man. It feels good actually, it feels fine. 
We got some wheel balancer stuff that we're gonna get for it just to balance out the big wheels, but I mean, definitely like once you're cruising at speed, it feels fine. Granted, the trailer is empty ish. I mean, it doesn't have the car or the wheels in it. So it'll have like another 3,500 pounds in it or like loaded up, ready to go out of town. But I mean, I'm like barely on the throttle to maintain the speed. To drag race your truck versus my truck. Yeah. Truck brakes definitely aren't quite as good as the uh, old Dodge. The Dodge had some really good freaking brakes on it though. The thing was incredibly confidence inspiring. Didn't have upgraded brakes? Yeah. Had towing, like a uh, power stop, like upgraded calipers and rotors, like bigger calipers and rotors. Yeah, this is kind of nice though. I'm glad we did this because like, it already like it already feels way better than I kind of remembered it feeling. It is empty. You can feel that it's empty. Like it doesn't feel very heavy behind. Well, like, I don't know. It feels fine. I'm happy with it. Oh, there we got swing wide to get in here. This is a. I remember. I would not have known that you could get a big enclosed trailer in here if it weren't for the fact that like Caleb and Orion had big enclosed trailers and they made it in here. But it's a pretty tight squeeze into our fence. I mean, you got plenty of room if you swing it wide. Also, last time we towed was on the stock too. Definitely feels noticeably peppier this time. Oh yeah, I'm so, I'm stoked, honestly. Like that felt so much better than last time in like every way, shape, and form. Last time was terrible. Hell yeah, guys. Proper toe test, well, not proper toe test, but toe test in a toe tune with trailer brakes, with proper setup trailer, much better, <laughs> much better. We just gotta try her loaded down. With the boost leak fixed. Yeah. I figure there's no reason to test load it down until we have a boost leak fix. And I have a tack. <laughs> I'm gonna register it tomorrow. I wonder what our oil tanks are. 209, not bad at all. Man, I gotta say, that test made me super happy. I definitely went through a dilemma. Uh, I drove this to my girlfriend's house. It was about an hour away. I drove it there and back. And it was it was shaken because of the wheels. And, and it was just like felt kind of down on power. It was on the stock tune still. And I was just like, man, like this, this might not work, you know, like this might not work for what I want to do. And like I said, this is an empty trailer towing test. You know, we're going to have 3,500 more pounds in here. So it's definitely going to be slower than that. But like, it felt fine. It felt totally fine. I, I never accelerate fast to the trailer anyway. Um, once it got up to speed, it felt fine. It was holding speed fine. Um, obviously, you know, it's going to be different going up hills and stuff, but I think once the boost leak is fixed, that extra power, it'll kind of even out. So I'm really, really happy with the results of that test because I really like this truck. When I was thinking about like, oh, maybe this isn't going to work for what I'm doing and what I want to do. I was like, man, I don't know though. Like I can't, I love the way this thing looks. <laughs> like I really don't want to get rid of it. So I, I don't know. That made me really happy. It's nice to finally have the trailer set up properly. Um, it's nice to get kind of a better test towing and, and I'm stoked. So stay tuned. We will get a real proper towing test going up and down hills. Hopefully once we fix the boost leaks, um, we'll have it registered and all that stuff. Um, and I want to try to get some drone shots of it cruising because I feel like it's going to look sick rolling down the road. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Much, much better test of the old 7.3. Really, really happy with it. Uh, I will see you guys next video. We got to start digging into the Miata. We got a drift event coming up in like less than a week. And then we got Texas the following week. So we got tons of stuff to do on the truck. Tons, tons of stuff to do on the Miata. Stuff to do on the RX-7. We got a lot going on. We got a lot to do. So stay tuned for those videos. But that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Okay,